Now the answer to the biggest question of all brings some peace. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the most puzzling cold criminal cases that authorities were finally able to close in 2023. He did admit to his involvement, and he did tell us that he came to Garland and that he committed this offense. The murder of Pauline Brazo. For almost half a century, the question of who killed Canadian single mother Pauline Brazo remained unanswered. Brazo was last seen at a restaurant in Calgary on January 8, 1976, and was found dead hours later on a rural road. Brazo, a mother of one, had just moved to Calgary from Saskatchewan. Her murder puzzled police back then, and even after it was reinvestigated in the 90s, authorities were unable to come up with any concrete leads. In 2021, the case was reopened once again. Advancements in DNA technology led police to seek out a private lab in the U.S. last year, which was able to give them a lead on a suspect. This time, investigators turned to genetic genealogy and were able to trace evidence from the crime to Ronald James Edwards. Edwards, who also served prison time for the sexual assault and attempted murder of another woman, was arrested in November 2023, the same month he turned 74, and charged with non-capital murder. The murder of Jeremy Stoner. This horrific crime not only claimed a boy's life, it also ruined that of an innocent man. In February 1987, Jeremy Stoner disappeared from his grandparents' home in Vallejo, California. After four agonizing days, his body was found about 30 miles away, having endured sexual assault before his murder. We are in the process, as we have been for the last several days, of going throughout that area and uh, looking for suspicious people, uh, anything that may be suspicious that has come through that area. The initial suspect was Sean Melton, who was charged with kidnapping and murder. However, Melton narrowly escaped imprisonment after two trials ended in hung juries. Peter Ford defended Melton at both his murder trials. He called Melton odd and that he thought he was helping with the case, but was only hurting himself. Fast forward to September 2023, when advancements in DNA technology led police to 69-year-old Fred Kane III, who was arrested in Oregon and extradited to California to face murder charges. Unfortunately, Sean Melton passed away in 2000, without the chance to see his name definitively cleared. Unfortunately, we didn't have the, the type of DNA testing that we have now back then. The DA's office also revealing Kane was interviewed by Vallejo police about the murder. The disappearance of Crystal Rogers. It, it's hard because I feel like I feel like nothing's happening right now and I can't handle that thinking nothing's happening. Crystal Rogers was last seen on July 3, 2015 by her boyfriend, Brooks Houck. She was reported missing two days later, after her abandoned car was discovered with her phone and purse still inside. Initially, Houck was the prime suspect, but due to a lack of solid evidence, police couldn't make an arrest. The case was further complicated in 2016 when Rogers' father, Tommy Ballard, was fatally shot while hunting, which some believe is connected to his daughter's disappearance. It's now eight years later and Crystal is still missing, but now a major development in the case. In 2020, the FBI came on board, conducting multiple searches on properties linked to the crime. In September 2023, a man named Joseph Lawson was indicted on criminal charges related to Rogers' disappearance and murder. The indictment states that on July 3rd and or 4th of 2015, Lawson committed conspiracy to commit murder when he agreed to aid one or more persons in the planning of the crime or attempt to commit the crime, and when he and a co-conspirator intentionally caused the death of another. The following month, Rogers' ex-boyfriend Houck was arrested for her murder the murder of Todd Lampley. HBO's The Wire is renowned for its realistic portrayal of crime, and it would play a role in the February 2011 murder of Todd Lampley in his Cape Cod, Massachusetts home. At the crime scene, investigators discovered a black cell phone and a sweet potato with DNA linked to the perpetrator. The phone was registered to Marlo Stanfield, the name of a character from The Wire. Hmm. Yeah, I know you see it. You see the big picture. Authorities also found that the show featured a potato used as a silencer. DNA on the root vegetable led them to Devaris Hampton, who had named Lampley in a previous murder case. In 2011, Hampton was wearing a GPS monitor, which authorities used to place him at Lampley's home during the murder. 
He was arrested in February 2023. Prosecutors go on to say that the day after the murder, police recovered a gun from a nearby pond, and they say GPS tracking also places Hampton at that pond the day after the murder. The murder of Barbara Villarreal. When Barbara Villarreal was murdered in her Garland, Texas home in November 1986, police turned to the usual suspect, her husband. However, by his account, Villarreal was attacked by intruders in their home. DNA evidence seemed to back up this claim, as investigators found blood at the crime scene that belonged to neither Villarreal or her husband. The case eventually went cold, and Villarreal's husband later passed away. As DNA technology advanced over the years, however, authorities made a significant breakthrough. They were able to link evidence from the crime scene to Laborio Canales, Villarreal's brother-in-law. Detectives say Laborio Canales was there the night Villarreal died and is responsible for the brutal stabbing of his sister-in-law. 85-year-old Canales was arrested in July 2023 and confessed to the crime, admitting that he had killed his brother's wife over a family dispute. He did admit to his involvement and he did tell us that he came to Garland and that he committed this offense. The Mysterious Lady of the Dunes. On July 26, 1974, the body of a mysterious woman was discovered on a beach in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Dubbed the Lady of the Dunes, both her identity and that of her killer remained unknown for nearly five decades. Since then, she was known as the Lady of the Dunes because investigators were unable to identify her. Over the years, the case gained notoriety as various theories emerged, including one claiming that she appeared as a background performer in Steven Spielberg's 1975 film Jaws. Following repeated unsuccessful efforts in October 2022, investigators were finally able to identify her using forensic genealogy as Ruth Marie Terry. Terry had disappeared in the summer of 1974 after a trip with her new husband, Guy Moldavan. In August 2023, police officially closed the case, naming Moldavan, who had died in 2002, as Terry's killer. As investigators, cases like this one haunt us, and the agencies represented here today are constantly reevaluating and coming up with new investigative strategies to try and advance them. The murder of Gretchen Harrington. On August 15, 1975, Gretchen Harrington vanished on her way to a summer Bible camp in Marple Township, Pennsylvania. Her remains were discovered two months later in a park close by. David Zanstra, a local pastor who reportedly called in Harrington's disappearance after Harrington's father asked about his daughter, was questioned by police but denied seeing the girl that day. That statement was a bold-faced lie. Prosecutors say Zanster was a family friend and even helped search for her as hundreds aided to help find the little girl. The breakthrough in the case came in early 2023 when a woman, who was a friend of Zanstra's daughter, showed police her 1975 diary. It detailed claims of Zanstra's misconduct towards her and suspicions of his involvement in possible kidnappings. Investigators have said Zanstra could have more victims out there. When confronted with these claims, the 83-year-old Zanstra confessed to the crime. He was arrested in July and charged with Harrington's kidnap and murder. The murder of Jennifer Odom. The recent rain washing away all evidence. The disappearance of Jennifer Odom on February 19, 1993 led to a massive search in the state of Florida. Sadly, her remains were found six days later in an abandoned field. And her mother's life was forever changed. I'll never be better. I'll never be who I was five years ago. Despite decades of investigation and hundreds of leads, no promising developments emerged until 2015. DNA analysis linked a man named Jeffrey Norman Crum to a similar case that occurred in the same area just one year and one month before Odom's disappearance. Investigators say evidence from that case helped them link Crum to the Odom case. After 30 years, is a lot to, to get through. Uh, I guess shock is one word, happiness, joy. I mean, it's a horrible act that occurred, so you're not really getting what you want back. Authorities spent the next few years building their case around Crum as a suspect, and in July 2023, he was charged with the murder, sexual assault, and kidnapping of Odom. Crum was already serving two life sentences for another case when these new charges were filed. The murder of Rita Curran. In 1971, 24-year-old schoolteacher Rita Curran was killed in her Burlington, Vermont apartment shortly after leaving the nest. 
The gruesome murder shattered the neighborhood's sense of security at the time and triggered one of Vermont's most notorious unsolved mysteries. Investigators carefully collected and preserved key evidence from the crime scene, including a cigarette butt and a piece of Curran's clothing. Decades later in 2014, DNA from the cigarette butt was used to form a profile, but it failed to match anyone in the federal database. Really, it was the enormity of the case that, that needed the team approach. The amount of evidence was just, was just staggering. This was the most investigated case the Burlington Police Department had ever had. The case was later reopened, and investigators announced in February 2023 that they had used genetic genealogy to ultimately link the profile to William DeRoos. DeRoos lived in the same apartment building as Curran, but provided a false alibi to police. Sadly, justice could not be served, as DeRoos had passed away in 1986. Today, William DeRoos would be 83, but there is not a cop in this building who would not happily put handcuffs on him. The Gilgo Beach serial killings. This may be a cold case for some time. It's unreal, and I'm just numb. In May 2010, 24-year-old Shannon Gilbert went missing after a distressing 911 call. While searching for her, authorities found the remains of four other women, now known as the Gilgo Four. One by one, the bodies were identified, and with each name came the story of a troubled life cut short. Over the next year, more remains, including Gilbert's, would be discovered. He's going to make a mistake. They all do. And we're going to get this guy. Although a profile of the killer was circulated in the media, no arrests in this case were made until July 2023. New York architect Rex Hewerman became a suspect after DNA testing tied him to evidence found on one of the victim's bodies. Investigators say updated technology allowed them to test hair samples that were originally degraded in a degraded condition on the victims. And they found they were, they then followed him as well to get abandoned DNA samples. His car was also identified identified by a witness, and cell phone records showed that he attempted to communicate with some of the victims. Hewerman was charged with killing three of the Gilgo Four and remains a prime suspect in the murder of the fourth. What cold cases do you hope will get solved in 2024? Let us know in the comments below. People say, how do you get through it? How did you get through it? I got a lot of rocks holding me up.